on Tuesdays and then reports to the Nelson Mandela Bay COVID-19 Command Council that is chaired by the executive mayor that just said a few minutes uh, ago. So, so we, we, are, we have introduced uh, post command council press briefings. As you are aware that uh, we are having a serious, serious uh, crisis in Nelson Mandela Bay of uh, uh, spiraling uh, infections of COVID-19 and we are trying every means to, to, to try and turn back the tide. So uh, we are introducing that post command council press briefing. Uh, we will proceed uh, like this uh, up until we, we, we can manage the situation. And uh, I want mine is not to talk to the executive mayor and uh, Mr. Brown. We will address you about the deliberations of the command council as well as the deliberations of the joint operations uh, committee that Mr. Brown chairs that said yesterday and the plans in place that we have to try and manage the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, and, 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 and all related uh, matters that are related to the COVID-19 crisis we're handling. Uh, Executive Mayor, I think, uh, let, let me not delay, let me hand over to you and then uh, Mr. Brown to, to, to take us through of, about your meeting that just said and then and, and, what we are doing as the city to try and then get out of this uh, crisis we are currently in. Over to you, Mayor. No, thank you very much uh, to you. Um, and um, I wish to welcome all the media houses who are here. And, um, and maybe say this is a long overdue exercise that we are embarking on. Um, but uh, we think this is the most opportune time for us to, to start with this uh, uh, post uh, Metro Command uh, uh, briefings. Um, we've we've been having this meeting since that I think since the beginning of, the, the, beginning. of, the, of the COVID um, when it was uh, regulated that we must have this. Uh, we are fortunate that all the relevant stakeholders have been part of this exercise since, since, since its inception. And um, we wish to thank all the partners who have been with uh, us right through this. Uh, and uh, at some stage, we thought that as a city we were winning the race or the fight against COVID. You recall that uh, it was this command council that took a decision to close down at the time the Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium as a quarantine site um, because of at the time we saw the numbers were really uh, dwindling and there was no justification as to why we should continue with the stadium at the time. And uh, we will also admit that at some point we considered even the issue of the field hospital because the numbers were really going down and we were happy with what we were seeing at the time. Um, there were discussions that we were already starting as to how we're going to deal with the field hospital. But uh, all of a sudden, in a short space of time, uh, the whole the hospital now the field hospital is like gold to us now it's something that we have and we value and we are happy that we did not take a decision at the time we were told about the second wave that might come we were sure that we were ready with what we have and um, but the reality now is that uh, uh, the reports that we've been ha we've been getting are beginning to scare all of us. The reports that we're getting from both private and public um, hospitals indicate that we are in a serious uh, situation as a city. And um, Shane uh, will take you through to the specifics, um, but the picture it paints is that. Uh, our hospitals now are, are, are full. 
I see you bets are a struggle to get. So we are saying uh, one of the things identified as a cause, because we are also seeing a new trend now of children also being um, infected. There's a, a range of uh, reasons as to why that is the case but the age group between 14 and 24 is now becoming a, a real worry for us as a city. And um, the issue of compliance, complying with regulations, especially um, when it comes to social gatherings, it is becoming a worry. I'm sure at a later stage, a question is going to be posed, what are you doing as a city? to deal with such. So that is why we are here, so that you assist us in getting the message across to all the residents of Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality to have a, a closer and clearer understanding of the situation that we find ourselves in. And if we don't change our ways, the situation has the potential of getting even worse than it is now. So that is why we are here, colleagues, and we wish to welcome you. And uh, let's engage on what is currently happening so that you can get the message across to all the residents, make sure everybody is aware, and what are we planning as a city in terms of turning the, the, the whole situation around. And that is why we are here. And Shane is going to take us through as to what was presented in today's meeting of the Command Council. And once we are done, we will take questions uh, from yourself for clarity, uh, and then we, 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 we will hand over to you, Program Director, once we are done. Over to you, Shay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to very briefly give everybody a very concept overview of what's been, what, what we've done today, keeping in mind that today's Command Council meeting is a result of yesterday's Joint Operations Centre meeting, which happens on the Tuesday. Um, also out of today's meeting is an agreement that tomorrow we will have another joint operations meeting, but a combined meeting with our command council as well as a joint operations, as well as, well as with our provincial counterparts. Um, it has been taken heed of that the city is in serious trouble when it comes to COVID cases. Uh, from a hotspot point of view, the city is now the hotspot of the entire country uh, with Current cases at five and a half thousand rand. That's up until the end of yesterday. Um, yesterday alone, we had 840 positive cases. Um, the mayor's already mentioned our hospitals have reached capacity. Those hospitals, when I say capacity, there are no beds available that can be nursed or manned. Um, in the private hospitals, all the um, ICU units throughout the city, at both private and government hospitals. Um, in fact, a lot of the hospitals have now started cancelling elective surgery simply because there is no capacity to deal with it. And please keep all of this in mind that the nursing staff and the doctors are also being infected and heavily infected with COVID this time around, um, where there's been a number of deaths as well in that regard. But um, obviously it has a massive impact on the staff. It's the same staff that had to deal with COVID in the first wave. Those staff are quite frankly, and we're hearing it from both private sector and public sector, those staff are exhausted. And so to pick themselves up to deal with the second wave has been quite a struggle. They are doing what they can. Um, Where we have still empty beds, they are empty simply because there are no staff available to work at those beds. We are trying to deal with that matter as well in looking at how do we recruit more nursing staff that are not available within the city. Um, the COVID cases, the mayor's already mentioned that unfortunately a lot of the COVID cases are with the young, younger generation and that starts from as young as six years old up to your 35 year old, which does indicate children going back to school, universities going back, as well as indicates the nightlife. Um, so it goes both ways. We've noticed that there's been a massive increase with nightlife in our city. Um, I'm talking about parties and, and so forth. And where there's nightlife, there is absolutely zero social distancing. So what we've also done in that regard is we've asked the law enforcement units to play a greater role there to ensure that 
there's enforcement that's taking place and reminding owners of whether it's taverns, pubs, um, restaurants, uh, I won't say nightclubs because even though there are, my, there are some nightclubs running, it's illegal. It's not allowed under level one, so that's a, just a no. But what we've actually asked is for law enforcement to go around, not just to close them down, but around about 10, 11 o'clock at night, guys, it's time to shut down, last round. 12 o'clock is curfew. It's still a curfew. That means at 12 o'clock you're supposed to be at home already, not outside. Um, so we, we're looking at enforcement around it. People have been arrested for being on the streets after 12 o'clock. Some, some owners have been arrested and fined as well in that regard. For the last couple of weeks, we've, we've looked at that quite aggressively. We're also looking at our, our communications strategies in that we're going to be coming with a far more aggressive approach to get the message out. And in that, we've brought both the university and the Department of Education on board in these regards. Uh, May I think that's very, a very brief synopsis of what's going on. I think I could talk for a long time on COVID, but the message that needs to go out is around compliance. Um, what we've heard from province and national is the last thing we want is a lockdown. But it cannot be ruled out if we don't start complying and start bringing the curve down. That, that is seriously threatening the city. We have, in our own municipality, we have departments closing down on a daily basis. South African police services have, depart, have stations closing down on a daily basis. Even the 1 centre was closed last week for a couple of days as a result of COVID. COVID is all around us. The big difference between the first wave and the second wave is first wave was very much, you could very easy see where your hotspots were and what was creating it. The second wave is purely all over the city. There is no part of the city that's not been impacted. Um, and that is a huge difference and a huge worry in the city, and we are trying to deal with those matters. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Executive Mayor. Thank you very much, uh, Shane. Uh, uh, Executive Mayor, I'm not sure whether you would not like to, 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 to have a bite, just, just to, to, to give uh, context uh, at, at your level uh, from, the, from Shane's presentation before we open for colleagues. No, 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 from, from what Shane has said, this is what we agreed. Uh, it was the report uh, that was discussed by the command uh, uh, council, and uh, that is what we have agreed upon. And the issue is around the, the compliance. And the major thing that we don't want to see happening as a city is a harder lockdown for the city. We know the impact that it has, the, the lockdown, how the lockdown has had in the city, especially economically, and uh, people losing jobs, and that's something that we cannot afford. Uh, but also we are in agreement that if the situation does not change, there isn't much that we can do if, we, uh, if the numbers continue to grow. We, that is a situation that we might find ourselves in. We are a hotspot in the province. We are a hotspot in the country. And that is very worrisome for us. And um, the numbers, the rate at which the numbers are, are growing, it, it, it's quite alarming. We are worried as a city. And the only way is for us to make sure that every uh, citizen is aware of the danger that we find ourselves in I keep on saying this thing of you might have a medical aid, but the reality is if you are, if you one can't look after himself or herself, you might be in a situation where even if you go to a private hospital, you might not access a, a, a high care as a result of what Shane has said now. So people must at all level make sure that they observe um, the COVID uh, protocols. Make sure at all times we, are, we, we comply, we preach that message to all the residents and so that we can start seeing the numbers going down. That's the only way we'll beat uh, the, the, the COVID. And we're saying this because we have done, we have done it in the past. In the, in the, just in the, a few months ago, we were uh, rejoicing, saying that we have won the race. And, and now that it's coming back, I think let's, we are just calling on all of us to pull in one direction and uh, and make sure that we, we win this fight. This is a fight we cannot lose. Uh, 
at the many, too many deaths that are being reported, and that's a worry for, for all of us. Because we know one death, and, and all the people that are called um, uh, conducts of that one person, it becomes a, a worry. Uh, so we are, uh, in, in, and the one reason, and the other issue that was raised uh, is that previously we had issues with funerals uh, being the super spreaders in the past, but now it, it is the social gatherings that we need to emphasize that, that uh, uh, funerals, we are not saying we are out of the woods, they are not, uh, but they are not the reason for this hype at this moment. It is the social gatherings that have been identified and we wish to tell people that they must at all times, because we don't want to shut uh, places of people where they go and, and uh, enjoy themselves. Uh, when they are complying. But when there's non-compliance, that is where we are saying law enforcement must come in and make sure that everybody is compliant. That is the message that we want to go out. That is the message that we want you as media people to assist us with, to make sure that it reaches all corners of our city. Everybody must be aware of the situation that we find ourselves in so that when we win this race, we win it uh, together. Uh, I think that's it for, for me for, for now. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Executive Mayor. Uh, colleagues, uh, I think it's, 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 it's your time to, 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 to ask questions. Uh, please identify yourself and the media house you are coming from and then uh, ask uh, your question, if you, ha if you have any. Uh, I'll take uh, the first round. Uh, Estelle, I can see you are raising your hand. Yes. Yeah, you can um, come. Uh, Estelle from Bally Maverick. Um, can we get an exact count, please, of the number of infections uh, at the moment? And then my second question is, um, how many places have actually been shut down for failing to comply? And maybe you could just talk us through what it was. Was it the lack of social distancing, lack of mask wearing? What were the issues? Was it the breach of curfew? Are you done, Estelle? I am, thank you. Thank you, Estelle. Uh, Lynn, we see you. You're raising your hand. Can, can, can you come with your question? Good afternoon, Mayor. Good afternoon, Mr. Brown and colleagues. Um, if I can just have the latest toll, please. Thank you. The latest? The death toll, please. Okay, okay. Uh, Shadley, Sh your question. I can see you're raising your hand. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon to everybody. Um, just given the situation as outlined by the Mayor and Mr. Brown, well, how would this impact on the plans for the summer season? Thank you. Okay, uh, Michael, you are the last one in this round. Uh, uh, others will take uh, from the second round. Mike, uh, please ask a question. Thank you. This is for the mayor. Uh, you mentioned a hard lockdown for the city. Is there a specific number of active cases before such a move would actually take place? Or is it just a case of waiting to see? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, colleagues, we'll take the second round uh, after the, the, the questions that have already been asked have been uh, answered. Can all those who have asked, who are, who are waiting their responses, drop their hands so that we can know exactly who's coming for the second round? Uh, over to you, uh, Executive Mayor and, and, and uh, Mr. Brown. No, no, thank you very much. Uh, let me maybe take the easy question. Shane will take the difficult one. <laughs> um, no, no. Shane will take the question that uh, deals with direct figures. Yes. And uh, I will take the question or the one asked by uh, Michael around the hard lockdown, as well as the question asked around the summer season. Uh, the others relate to numbers. Shane will deal with those. Um, let me maybe start with the summer season. Um, when we launched the summer season, we already looked at the issues, question of numbers. And the fact that the summer season that we have launched was more of a virtual 
uh, summer season. Uh, so we, it, that part is already taken care of. Uh, we, it's not your traditional summer season that we normally have, uh, that uh, where people will flock to the stadium on the 16th of December, there will be fireworks, and there's the, the, the your normal one. The 31st of December and all of those. It's, it, it's now different. It's, uh, it's mostly virtual. And where people are, we will gather, the issue of social distance is, will be strictly monitored. Um, we, have, we will be having events where people will come, converge in one area, like your, where they'll come and watch the movies at St. George's, all of that. But that will be strictly monitored. And um, uh, the, the 31st, uh, where there will be fireworks, I mean, the, that one is out. The mayor will be making a, a speech in front of the city. So those events, we have made sure that uh, even before we had the second wave, but the issue as a city, we make sure that the summer season, we don't have people converting in one place. Uh, and all the events that we'll be having uh, are, are taking into consideration the regulations that are already before us. So that one is, I think we are, it was outlined at the launch and it should not be an issue. Um, uh, where people converge, we'll make sure that there's law enforcement, every protest, the lockdown protocols, uh, I mean the COVID-19 protocols are observed. And the issue of numbers uh, that uh, Mr. Kimberley also asked is, I, I wouldn't know, we wouldn't know, but the, as I said earlier, um, we are now seen as the hotspot in the, in the, in the province. We are seen as a hotspot in the country. So already there's those, it, it, it raises alarms. And the national uh, province, the, the reason there's a meeting tomorrow with, between us and the province is because of the numbers that we are in now. So which means any time the, uh, the, uh, the minister pronounces, he can say, uh, because of what we are seeing, you cannot be a, a, a hotspot in the country and, and that does not raise a concern. So the reason why we're having these meetings now with the province as well as uh, the minister, uh, the, I mean the national office, is because already as they are, because what is the problem now is not really the numbers. Because if you go to other parts of the country, the numbers of active cases are more than we have. But the problem is the, the rate at which our numbers are going up. It, it, it is a problem. Uh, we, in the past few weeks, I think two weeks ago, we were sitting at uh, less than 500 numbers. Now we are sitting at 5,000 in the space of two weeks. So that is a worrisome trend. And on a daily basis, the numbers continue to grow at an alarming rate. And that is a call, cause for concern on, on its own. So that is why we're saying uh, um, the, that call is not ours to make. It's the, it's the call from the minister to decide or the president to say what must happen in the city. Uh, but what we are presenting is the real numbers that are before us, and we are concerned as a city about that one. Shane can deal with the statistics. With the statistics here. I think I think maybe uh, uh, Mr. Brown, as, as you deal with the statistics question, I think maybe it would be also appropriate to reflect more on, on the, 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 the security cluster, the work that is being done on the ground, places that have been closed already, that were not complying, and, and, and that, that, that uh, information maybe it will be beneficial for the session. Okay. Um, first, first thing I think, I'll, the first question was asked is, what are the total cases in the metro? I did mention it in the beginning, but I will mention again, it's 5,574 active cases in the metro right, as, as of last night. Um, the death toll is a difficult one because it's constantly changing. Um, but as, as, as a, yesterday there were 12 additional deaths. Um, our death toll in the metro from the beginning is now 1,306. So we have not broken that up into a first or second wave, but the total number of people that died in the metro is 1,306. In terms of the law enforcement, those visits happen and I would be reluctant to give you exact, I'm not going to give names of places that, that, that have been shut. And the reasons, there have been 17 cases open in, over the last two weekends. There have been, that I'm aware of, seven places that were shut down for non-compliance, either selling liquor after hours or for, um, having a functions after midnight. All these no manager appointed to run 
And then, we, as I mentioned earlier, there have been a number of nightclubs that have continued to try and operate. Those are not allowed and they have been shut down. Um, I've got a full comprehensive report from Metro Police and our SAPS with me with all the totals. And I haven't added them all up because it, it goes about 12, 14 pages in total. But we have got that information. And that is an area that we are aggressively fighting. And it happens on a daily basis. It's not only happening over weekends now. So those visits are happening seven days a week now. Uh, thank you, Shane. Uh, thank you, Executive Mayor. Uh, colleagues, uh, do we have uh, any other questions? If, if, if none, uh, please indicate. Uh, Angelique, do you have a question? Uh, Mr. Mugana, no question. Candice, I can see you are raising your hand. No, I'm so good, colleagues. Okay, thank you, Mr. Nguana. Uh, Candice, can, can you come? Good afternoon, everyone. Candice from PE Express. I just want to know, what is the status of the field hospital that was handed over by VW at this moment? And what is the status of the stadium that served as a quarantine site? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, over to you, Zed, Mayor, and then Mr. Brown. Yeah, no, no, the, the, the response to that is the stadium was closed. Let me start with that one. We've closed the stadium as a quarantine isolation site. So the stadium is, is back to it, what it normally does on a day to day. Uh, it's a sporting facility, a event facility, so that is what is, being, that is, what is happening there now. Um, we have not had any discussion as to whether we will reopen it or that. We have not even tracked back to that because of this decision that we took recently to close it. So uh, it's back to what to, to MBDA to run it. Uh, Chippa United is playing there. Uh, there's talks of rugby and, and other events happening at the stadium. Also or making sure that every time the events we comply with the uh, COVID-19 regulations. Uh, the field hospital um, is, uh, as, as, as earlier mentioned by Shane, that the field hospital is there. It was never closed. There's around 200 patients, if I'm correct, at the, at the field hospital as we speak. Um, and uh, there is a challenge that also Shane raised earlier of staff. At the, at, the, at the field hospital that the Department of Health is trying to uh, address. Uh, you must remember that uh, we, we, we are partners in that. Uh, each one has its role. VW donated to us, we provide support, but it's run by Department of Health. And uh, they are trying to address the issue of, of staff shortages. Uh, staff shortages is, is a problem that is now being experienced across even in hospitals, uh, both private and, and public hospitals. Uh, uh, issues that crop up are issues of fatigue and, and uh, COVID-19 infections that are, are affecting uh, all, all the, uh, um, uh, the institutions or, or the, the, the hospitals as well as the field hospital. They are all affected by COVID, others by fati fatigue. Um, people are just tired. Those who have not been infected, they are tired, they've been working right through. Uh, the monitoring of people that are sick is not something that is, it's 24 hours, that you must, seven days a week, and you must do it. Uh, so, so those are the reasons that we uh, have, but the, the field hospital is still open, and uh, they've been trying to clean, make sure that other, uh, because that, that facility was never used to its uh, full capacity. So they've made it ready for other sections of, of it that have not been used. Make sure they are clean in the event that numbers grow, uh, people can access it. So it is still there, 200, and the capacity I think is 1,500. Uh, so we still have over 5,000 beds available at the field hospital if uh, there, there, there's a need for, for us to. But we've never really gone beyond the 200. Uh, a mark in one go at the field hospital, even during the time when it was, um, uh, we were during the first uh, wave, if I may call that, uh, call it that. So that is the status of the 
hospital as well as the uh, stadium. No, maybe I should just also explain something. The field hospital currently has 218 active patients in the hospital. Of all the hospitals, there's 642 people hospitalized in the metro at the moment. So one can easily work that out. A third of all our patients are already at the field hospital. So without the field hospital, we would have been in serious trouble as a metro. So a third of our patients currently are in the field hospital. Okay, let's, let's take the last two questions, uh, Executive Mayor. Uh, please uh, bear with us. Just the last two questions from, from Michael and then and, uh, Estelle. Uh, Michael, let's start with you, and then Estelle, you, you will uh, follow after Mike. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is for either Mr. Brown or Mr. Boyer, but both of them have said that uh, nighttime partying seems to be a problem. Has the city considered asking the Provincial Command Council or the National Command Council to change the curfew in the city to actually put a stop to these parties? Okay, let's, let's take you, Esther. Thank you. Um, I just want to make sure, because the way I understand it, the capacity, the field hospital, as far as staffing constraints, with regards to staffing constraints, are at capacity. I mean, it's one thing to say they can fit in 5,000 people, but there are not enough doctors and nurses to look after more, or if I'm wrong, please correct me. What is the maximum amount of patients that the field hospital can take at the moment, um, given the stop that is there at currently? Okay, okay, thank you very much, uh, colleagues. Uh, those are the last questions, Executive Mayor and, and, and Mr. Brown. The first one, the one that talks to uh, we approached the province, uh, the provincial command or the national command on, on, on the curfew issue, and the second one, the field hospital question. Yeah, no, no, uh, let, uh, Shane will take the, 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 the numbers. Of the, yes. yeah. Let me take the one of the curfew from, from my camp. Um, in the meeting that we had last week, it was this problem we were identified a week ago, uh, the reports that came in. and. Uh, uh, one of the recommendations from the committee was that we must approach the province to try and reduce or, or extend the, 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 the curfew in the city. You know, the curfew in terms national is up from 10 until 4 o'clock in the morning. So, uh, I mean, from 12 until 4 o'clock in the, in the morning. And we, we had asked because when we were, the reports came to say that the, the social gatherings are a problem, and then the, the request was to say, or the resolution was to say, let's start from 10 until 4 in the morning. And uh, that's, that's something that we have already done. We have asked, but the, the decision is not ours. Uh, but we have we've made that uh, uh, request. And uh, look, we're making this request also mindful of the fact that the consequences, there are people who are making uh, the business, uh, and that will, that will have an effect on them and on the businesses and a lot of other uh, things. And, uh, uh, but we just feel that the, the, the rate at which the infections are happening requires us to, to do, to make, uh, if we may say, unpopular decisions. Uh, it's one of those uh, that we, the, the lives, the value of lives is more important than whatever. And uh, we understand the, the implications and uh, it has uh, implication on a lot of other issues, but um, we, 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 that was the decision that was taken. The, the request is with the provincial, and uh, uh, obviously the province will take it to national, and we await the, the decision from, from the minister or the president to pronounce, and uh, we have done our part, and now it, the, the decision lies with the, with the other spheres of government, not, not us in the matter. Thanks, I have got the unpopular question. Yes, <laughs> and the field hospital currently has a capacity of just under 1,500 beds, but the pansy place to go up to 5,000 beds, so that is quite correct. However, because of the nursing, the staffing shortage, and I don't want to just say nurse, nursing, so it's, a, it's a staff shortage, there's a capacity constraint. The capacity of the field hospital um, is estimated, and I say estimated because currently there are over 100 staff that are off with COVID infections. I'm talking public and private hospitals. 
So there's an urgent request going. I know the private hospitals have already requested additional nursing staff, additional staff from outside of the province to come into a system and boost their numbers. The public sector have requested the province to help from throughout the province to help boost their numbers. So at the moment, the, the field hospital can take between 250 to 300 patients. We are working extensively around the post of filling posts that were vac are vacant there, as well as bringing in additional resources in the province, keeping in mind that we are the hotspot of the province. What is happening in the rest of the province is not nearly as serious as what's happening in Nelson and Delta Metro. So the request is a, is a legitimate and a fair request, as well as with the private hospitals where they brought in their staff from other, other, other hospitals throughout the country to boost their numbers down there. Uh, thank you, Shane. Uh, uh, just just one uh, thing, maybe to to, to clarify that uh, we must also note that that uh, capacitation of the field hospital is is is, is a process done through the, the Department of, of of Health, working close with uh, the Metro Command, of course, and the, the entities that are relevant. Uh, colleagues, I think uh, we, 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 we are done with questions. Uh, thank you, Executive Mayor, and uh, thank you to colleagues of, of the media. Uh, for the short notice and uh, the response. Uh, if ever there is any urgent uh, need for us to converge like this, we, we will do that in the same fashion, but uh, for now, we are still confirming that uh, every after Mayor's Command Council, we will uh, converge like this and address you or to update you about our COVID-19 uh, fight and, and, and where we are heading. We hope it will be better. Thank you.